now we are going to start with the new topic that is the solid state right as you all are familiar that what is matter so the first question is that before we start with solid state first question is that that what is matter as you all are studying uh, sciences or chemistry from the previous classes as well so i think you are familiar with matter but still to avoid confusion i'll just define the term again see matter is something that occupies space and has mass again matter is something that occupies space and has mass and you know there are different states or states in which the matter exists like on the basis of physical properties we have got three states of matter that is the solid the liquid and the gas so these are actually the three states of matter in which the like on the basis of physical properties in which states the matter exists that is the solid liquid and gas right for example uh, you are familiar with the ice you are familiar with the water you drink you are familiar with the steam which you use to uh, cook certain kind of things like uh, dhoklas or something else right so you are all are familiar with the three forms like if we talk about the steam we talk about the ice we talk about the water you know that they are formed of the common substance and that common substance is water right that is the co constituents are h and o and the ratio of combination of volume and mass is fixed that is 2 is to 1 and even the mass is fixed right but still we get to see different states right we know that like when we talk about uh, ice so ice is the solid form of water right and when we talk about water it is the liquid form of water and when we talk about the steam it is the gaseous form of water as you can see in the figure see this is the ice this is the liquid this is, sorry the water and this is the steam right so these all three things are made up of the same substance that is water but it is just uh, you can say the uh, condition of temperature and pressure in which they are existing right so for, suppose i have water if i say i want ice i have to keep the water at very low temperature right and if i want water i have to just uh, like uh, we can melt it like after the melting point we get the water that means the liquid form of uh, the thing water right and when we just heat it or boil it we are going to get the third state that is the gaseous state that is the steam of water so that means it is all the condition of temperature and pressure right it all depend upon the condition of temperature and pressure that we are getting different states like we are getting this thing um, solid uh, ice ice as solid water as liquid or steam as gas so this is all the matter of the condition of temperature and pressure nothing else right so because at uh, the, you can say a fixed uh, temperature or at a fixed pressure we get ice or at a fixed temperature or pressure we get the water and likewise we get steam so that means it is all the matter of the condition of the temperature and pressure in which the substance is present that is why we get to have different forms that is the solid liquid or gas but you know that most of the things what you see around are solids right if you know that like if you just if you're working if you're uh, this thing if you're studying in a class then you get to see chair table chalk everything right and suppose you are uh, in your living room you get to see sofas you get to see uh, show pieces you get to see a uh, mirror these all things are solid so that means we the it's okay that we have three states that is the solid liquid and gas but the most uh, you can say the most famous state or uh, you can say the state in which most of the substances exist around you is the solid state right that is why we are starting with this chapter solid state because we get to see so many solid things around us right so we should know that what actually uh, pro what actual properties they possess or what kind of behavior they possess at different conditions so that we can be familiar with the properties of them see now as i told you that the, for example if you, if you are in a classroom you get to see this marker we have this remote we have this uh, whiteboard you are sitting on a chair you have tables on which you are writing so they are different solids right but and you know that these different solids have different application like you are using different things for different uses like i'm using this marker for writing i'm using this whiteboard so that i can just uh, you can say write something on it right uh, you are having a chair a different uh, solid a kind of solid in which you you are which is meant for sitting you have a table where you keep the place uh, where you keep your copies and you can write something so that means different solids have different applications right though they are of same state they are exhibiting almost the same general properties but they are actually uh, being used uh, or you can say their applications are different 
Now, what is the question behind that? Why the applications are different? Why they are used for different things? Why uh, marker cannot be used for sitting? Right? Or you can say why chair can't be used for writing? Because they possess actually the different properties, right? Because of the, those different properties, they are used in different fields or they have different applications. So, in this chapter, what we are going to do, we are going to know about the different properties which are exhibited by the different solids. And you know that if you are just familiar with the properties of the solid, you can even invent solid of your desirable use. For example, we wanted that uh, we wanted that uh, there should be a lubricant which is which can be used at high temperature. And you know, we got definitely Definitely, and that lubricant is graphite. Graphite is a lubricant that can be used at very high temperature, right? So that means different solids have different applications because of the different properties. And you know what is the major uh, property that is, uh, you can say, existing in solids? That is the binding force. That is the binding force. That means the force which binds the uh, constituent particles together that is very strong in solids, right? So that means like uh, if we talk about different solids, as I told you about different applications, different properties, but the common property is that the different binding force. So here I am going to show you first the different solids uh, and we will be stating different uses for that as you all are familiar with the solids around you. But still I, I have just listed few solids for you. Just look at the board. See, we have this iron rod. So what is the property of this iron rod? This is very hard. You know that it is used for construction purposes. Like in the house you are sitting, in the buildings where you are working, these all the structure is made up of iron. See, it is so strong it is, right? Likewise, we have another solid as glass. See, glass is not so solid like uh, this thing, uh, the iron rod, but still it is, it is, uh, you can say, a solid. It is meant for uh, taking juice or something else. So, it has got different properties, right? If you just throw the iron bar, it is not going to break. But if you throw this glass, it is going to break. That means they possess different properties. Both of them are solid, but still the properties are different. Likewise, see, we have a cake. Cake is again solid. See, so beautiful, uh, you can see beautifully decorated cake as you can see. So, it is also a solid, but it is not resembling an iron rod, then does it? No, it is not resembling any iron rod because it is somehow spongy. If it is going to fall on the floor, it is going to stick on the floor, right? So, that means this uh, kind of solid is spongy. That means the solid can be spongy also, right? And can be tasty also. Likewise, we have this thing, the ice, as I have already told you that this is the ice, you can use it like when you are feeling uh, this thing, like when you, when in summers you come back to home, you want to drink chilled water and what you do, you just uh, uh, this thing, add a piece of cube to it and you just, uh, your, uh, your this thing, the thirst just went away. And the another thing is that the pen. See, the pen has, again pen is a solid, but it is meant for writing, right? It cannot be used for sitting or it cannot be used for keeping things. It is meant for writing because it possesses the properties like that. Likewise, we have the different solids like table. Table, we know that table is used for writing or something else. So, it is a strong thing. You can even keep uh, TVs or anything on it, right? Likewise, we have eraser. See, it is so soft. Again, it is. it has a property that it can erase things, right? If you write something with pencil and it, it has the ability to erase thing, right? And it is moreover soft in nature. Like we have bottles. See, we have plastic bottles. If we crush them, we, if we heat them, we can crush them, we can mold it in any kind of thing. That means this solid possesses the property of molding. That means if you heat it, you can change its shape. As you can see, if you put hot water in it, it is going to be crushed like this. So that means it has a property to crush. Otherwise, if you keep any hot things on iron bar, does it going to crush? No, not at all. It is not going to get affected at any condition. Right, likewise, we have soap, right. So, what property the soap has? Soap has the property of cleansing action, but that property is not possessed by pen or table or anything else. So, that means different solids actually have different properties, right. And because of those, those different properties, they are, they are used in different fields or you can say they have different applications. So, likewise, uh, like in general, we are just uh, summing up the properties of the solids. So, what properties the solid possess? First is that intermolecular space is short. That means if we get to see solid, there is very little space between them. And as the space is very little, that means the intermolecular force binding them is very strong. The force which is binding them is very strong. And due to this reason, they are 
they possess definite shape, they possess definite volume, they possess definite mass because of the strong binding force existing between them therefore they possess definite shape, volume and mass. And likewise what we have as you can see the particles are totally uh, so tightly packed they do not have the ability to move around but still they can show a motion and that motion is that that they can just oscillate at their mean position. So that means they are fixed at the, their position but still they can oscillate at their mean position that means they can show only vibratory or oscillatory kind of motion. And if we talk about the constituents it, is, it may be formed of atom, molecules or ions and uh, like as far as compressibility is concerned it is incompressible and it is rigid somehow. But still like see I have some these properties some of some of these properties but it is not like that every solid is going to possess these properties in the same amount. For example if I take about uh, talk about iron rod that means in iron rod intermolecular force is so strong but it is not so strong in the soap right. So that means the general property is that that uh, this, this thing the space is short the force is strong definite shape volume and mass they can oscillate about mean position atom molecule ions are the constituents and they are incompressible and rigid but still uh, you can say different different solids have got uh, a different range of forces like in some cases the binding force is not so strong but in some solids the binding force is much stronger so these properties are actually summed up in comparison to liquids and gases right but uh, like if we compare two or more solids so these properties can vary in slight amount that some, some is uh, rigid, some is soft in nature or uh, somehow like we are just comparing things, we are just comparing different solids. So these are the properties, I think you got it. Now we are going to start with another topic as we know about solid that what are, what are the, this thing, the basic properties of the solid. Now we are going to classify the solids on different types.